Hey team, I'm Maddie. Welcome to Science Side Up. And today, I'm not done talking about mollusks. Last time we talked about how the oxygen 18 isotopes in mollusk shells and their calcium carbonate could tell us about Earth's past temperatures. But if you thought that was all our gastropod friends had to tell us, then you were sorely mistaken. These little guys are holding more secrets. There are actually two more thermometers hidden in this calcium carbonate. But instead of looking at the oxygen levels, this time we're gonna look at that calcium. So calcium, can sometimes be replaced in this sort of chemical structure with magnesium or with strontium. This is because magnesium and strontium have the same valence as my calcium. If you've heard me talk about um, your zircons and, and uranium replacing zirconium in the crystal structure, you'll know what I'm talking about. But Simply put, if you take a look at the periodic table, um, here's calcium highlighted for you guys. Notice that magnesium and strontium are one above and one below calcium in the same column. That means they need the same number of electrons. They need to go under the same type of chemical reaction in order to have a, a balanced outer electron shell. So because they have that same valence, they're gonna undergo the same type of chemical reaction. Sometimes in my calcium carbonate mollusk shell, we're going to slip in some magnesium and some strontium as chemical impurities in the shell. So we can, in fact, take our same mollusk shells, take it back to the lab and our handy dandy mask spectrometer. And instead of measuring carbon 18 to carbon 16 ratios, we'll measure magnesium to calcium and strontium to calcium. Now, as we saw with the oxygen ratios, the colder it is, the more of the heavier element that's going to be incorporated, and the warmer it is, the more of the lighter element is going to be incorporated. Here, um, as temperature goes up, so let's just do a little arrow to keep our heads on straight. As temperature goes up, we'll see a larger magnesium to calcium ratio, so that means more magnesium when it's warmer and specifically less strontium um, and my strontium to calcium ratio will go down. Strontium is heavier. It has more protons, more neutrons. It's got a bigger nucleus than either calcium or magnesium. So the warmer it is, the harder it's going to be to incorporate that heavier element. The colder it is, the easier it's going to be. So this is actually kind of great because from our one friendly neighborhood gastropod, we get three different thermometers, three different ways to that measure the temperature that this shell was created in. Um, and the reason that that's great is because we have, these are like three independent measurements. So from one shell, we get the oxygen measurement of temperature, we get the magnesium and the strontium measurement of temperature. We can do all of these measurements, do all those calculations, and that makes our measure of the temperature more precise because we're, we're measuring it with different methodologies. Um, so this is actually really cool. This is all from one one molecule calcium carbonate in this one type of shell that has existed almost ubiquitously across planet earth for 500 plus million years this is a really useful tour tool our mollusk friends our mollusk friends are very very powerful but the wonders of mollusks don't actually stop here um mollusks grow the the, the shell lines 
these grow sort of like tree rings. So the mollusk shell isn't constantly growing, it grows in response to its environment. So if the water it's in is too acidic, it might grow slowly or stop growing altogether. Um, if it doesn't have enough nutrients available, same thing. So we have these lines on our shell that actually tell us about water quality, about the salinity, about the acidity, about the availability of nutrients. And you can look at all of those just by comparing, maybe say the distance, how much did I grow this period of time? Oh, and then we didn't grow very much. And then we grew a whole lot, something like that. And mollusk shells, a single mollusk, depending on the species, can live up to 500 years. So you can actually have a very detailed 500 year record from millions of years ago from a shell. And I think that's just so, 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 so cool. Not to just completely switch gears, but I do want to talk about one other type of climate proxy that we haven't really touched on yet. And that's going to be how do we figure out chemical composition of the atmosphere going back in time. Um, and specifically what we're interested in is going to be um, methane and carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere in the past. So the best way to do that is going to be to uh, get on your sea doo drive to Antarctica, put on your parka, hike out, drill down and get a big old long ice core. In that ice core, there's layers of ice, much like our shell or our tree rings, it grows up with time. So you have this pretty clearly delineated record of ice that froze year after year after year after year after year, going back to a very long period of time. Um, and what's important about that is in that ice, there are trapped gases specifically trapped carbon dioxide and methane amongst other things, but th that's what we're interested in. So very briefly, if you can measure how much carbon dioxide or methane is trapped in that layer of that ice core, you can extrapolate back how much carbon dioxide and methane there was in the atmosphere. So that's, that's, the, that's the quick version of how that all works. And we're going to use that next time when we're talking about um, a very cool period in Earth's climate history, which is the warmest time in Earth's history and um, what it can tell us about climate change today. So uh, pop back next week and we'll chat about that. Okay, team, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you and those you care about are well. Please like, subscribe, be kind, and I'll see you all next time. Bye team!